All right, so in this demonstration, we're going to talk about adding a new user as well as terminating a user within the site. If you go into the employee section, it's actually really easy to add a new user. Um, just as a note, when you come into the employee section, it does automatically filter to your active users. Um, so anybody that is terminated would be in this filter to that terminated status where you can quickly click on their name. And if they were a rehire, they get all their records here free of charge that you are allowed to keep, um, all their training records, any forms that they've submitted, any equipment, all that stays right here housed on their profile. To unterminate them, you just remove this term date by clicking edit here. Removing that term date on their profile and then saving changes and now that's an active user. If he has an email address listed on his profile, um, so let's go ahead and enter, let's just say that he has an email. You save changes again. You can quickly send him a welcome email that would just reset his login credentials right there and automatically send him a link to your site as well as that app download too. If you need to add a new user, you'll just come back into your employee section click this new button up here, and then just type in their credentials from here. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna say John Smith needs a username and password. Just type in his email again to send him those login credentials. It actually may not come checked whenever you tab over, but once you hit tab over to the next um, employee number, it will give you the option to check that send welcome email. So if you do want to email that out, just make sure that that's checked. Then from here, you'll just enter that employee number. It actually doesn't need to be a number. So if you don't assign numbers, um, the main thing is that it just needs to be unique. So if you did have multiple J Smiths, you would need to kind of have some sort of distinguisher like J dash Smith. You can do J dot dot Smith. Um, things like that will help or even an underscore as well to distinguish and make them more unique between each user. So in this case, I'm just going to do J Smith because I know I don't have that many users in my site right now. And then for his, the username, we usually do all caps for the employee number and then same thing for the username, just all lowercase. So kind of same format, just all lowercase. You do have to have an initial password and it will require them to change it when they first log in so that it's unique. And uh, usually I do the company name and then safe one. So usually that satisfies our password requirements from there. The next is the role that you wanna assign them. This is gonna be their level of access, whether they're that full admin role um, where they can edit, view, and delete things. A manager really only has view permissions where they can only view items. They can't really make a lot of edits to anything. An employee can only submit forms, complete trainings, um, and complete equipment inspections that are assigned to them from there. The employee role is the most limited access point that you can assign out to them from there. So just choose your level of access. You can also change their language. This is powered by Google Translate. So it will give you lots of options here to translate their profile as well. It will require internet connection for the language translator since we do use Google Translate to do that. And then once you have your credentials ready and you wanna send that welcome email, in this case, since this is a bogus email, I'm just gonna uncheck that just so I can show you what it looks like once you save your changes here. And then it shows, boom, your employee's created. So if you want to click here to view that employee, you can jump right into their profile, add their job title, their location, lines of business, hire date, all that good information, as well as if you ever needed to terminate that user, you could click edit on their profile again, terminate their profile by adding the terminated date, saving changes, and then now if I went back into my employee section, he would no longer show in this section because now he's in that terminated status where again, we can pull him back up and just reactivate him if we need to. 
So that is how to add and terminate users within the KPA EHS platform. Feel free to reach out to support at kpaehs.com if you have any questions. Thank you.